Jesse Lingard, I can finally say today is your day. Whether you consider him a career mode wonder kid, a social media merchant, or even Lingardinho, today the Manchester United youth prospect is going to be put to the test. He is the man that has made the Emirates' dance floor. I've received so many suggestions ever since we started this growth test battle series. Whether it's been in comments, my DMs on Instagram and Twitter, I finally decided to cave in, put up a poll for you guys, and the Lingardinho, Ronaldinho growth test battle absolutely popped off. If you guys want it, I'm a man of the people, I'ma give it to you. I'll leave the link to that community poll down in the description, so if you haven't gone and voted already, you can go ahead and have your say and chuck your vote in. No task is too tough for Sir BCHD to take on, so today, that is exactly what we're doing. We're trying to achieve Mission Impossible right here, and it's going to be our sole mission, our only focus, to make Jesse Lingardinho better than Prime Ronaldinho. If you needed any kind of reminder on how Ronaldinho is rated, what was his Prime? I'm rating as a legend icons moment card and it's right here before our eyes 95 overall the brazilian is an icon a global superstar the definition of a street baller the streets will never forget ronaldinho's impact on the game such a special player and his rating proves it however today we're going to do everything in our power for jesse lingard to overtake him lingard has been a part of manchester united setup ever since he was a kid basically he's been in their youth ranks for decades and this whole lingardinho nickname thing pretty much was an internet meme for a while and then all of a sudden he had the season of his life over at West Ham or half a season he finished off the second half of last campaign with an absolute bang and now the Lingardinho train is starting to take off again the hype is real however at the start of FIFA 21 career mode he is loaned out to West Ham so unlike real life he's gonna get a full season at the Hammers then once this season ends we'll be back at current day I've had to upgrade his overall base on the current squads he's now 79 overall with 80 potential can he have yet another breakout campaign and replicate that world class form he's had in 2021. Like I said, I wanted to take full control. There's not much we can do with him out on loan. So BCHD is going to travel down to London and switch over to be the West Ham boss. All I'm going to say is that Ronaldinho better be quivering. He better be shaking in his boots because Lingardinho is coming for him. This just might be our toughest challenge yet. Lingard is 27. This ain't no wonder kid. As much as we all want to believe it, as much as I love it for the meme, in a career mode sense, this is the worst case scenario. In terms of how he ranks here at West Ham, he's an important important squad member. He's only here on a one-year basis and I've decided why not upgrade the squad where we can. I've brought in Gabriel Jesus to lead the line in up top so at least he's assisting to a better striker and we don't have to rely on Mikel Antonio. I'm doing my part. I'm doing what I can as his development plan this season is going to be advanced playmaker. I want to get that five-star weak foot, improve it and all the other attributes around it. Recently I've been starting to take a little bit of a deep dive when it comes to player instructions. I've really been honing in on like all the intricate details. We've got him on defensive support He's just going to stay forward, stay on the edge of the box for crosses, free roam positional freedom. Like I said, we're going to need a minor miracle if we're even going to get Jesse into the 90s, let alone beat Ronaldinho's rating. We need him to release his inner Lingardinho this season, and Sir PCHD needs to work a managerial masterclass. I hope you guys are happy. You guys voted for this. The people have the power, so here we go. At the end of his first season, and his loan spell has expired here at West Ham, this is how Lingardinho's hammers have finished in the table and it's actually pretty close to how they did in real life obviously they got one better in six however this time they finished in seventh i think that is still europa league football 61 points finishing equal if not above manchester united lingard's former team or the team he's going back to the red devils failing to qualify for europe it's a pretty decent team outcome if you ask me in terms of the fa cup they got knocked out in round six to man city 4-1 and over in the carabao domestic cup success has been at a premium in round four they were eliminated to Jesse Lingard's United 5-4 on penalties. There's no European football for the Hammers to report on this year. So Lingard and West Ham have just been solely focused on his domestic campaign. And as you can see there, he's only improved a plus one. So not the best of starts, but at least there is growth. You'll love to see it. Jesse is enjoying the vibe of London. Still in excellent form. He's very happy at the club. Loves his player performance. He's very happy with his playtime and team performance. Now bursting back into the 80s. He secured 34 appearances this season and finding the back of the net 11 times and scoring 7 assists. With a 6.8 average match rating, that is 18 goal contributions for the English cam and under Sir BCHD, he's had one of his best seasons to date. I mentioned earlier, we're going to be changing development plans. I want to try to get him as much growth as possible. You can see we implemented Dynamo halfway through the season. That got him his 5 star skills, but he's still 15 overall points to even equaling Ronaldinho right now. With his current market valuation standing at £19 million, he got a little 11 
7% boost. Loki, I'm kind of torn right now. I don't know what to do because he's come to us saying that he wants to extend his loan spell, or at least he wants to make it a permanent deal. I wouldn't be opposed. However, I think there is so much more potential if he goes back to United. I release all the camp competition, and he just has better players around him and overall to improve his game, and in turn, is going to improve his output in the long run. Now, in comparison to the man himself, the Flare King, Ronaldinho, there is, they are still worlds apart. He is light years ahead, and it's going to take some intense training and a severe career turnaround if we wanted to get him into the 90s. So returning to Old Trafford might be his next career move. Welcome back, Sir Lingard. The prodigal son has returned to his rightful home. Contract negotiation-wise, he needs to be a crucial first-team player. That is exactly what he's going to be. New and improved squad role, a pay rise. I'm expecting proper Lingardinho form and potential to be unleashed this season. Some more housekeeping we've got to keep on top of. We've got Andres Pereira, the pre-season Messi. He is going to get released. Bruno Fernandes, I'm sorry. We're going to have to wave goodbye to the Portuguese Magnifico. And we've got even more cams arriving like Hannibal Mesbury. Next up to be world class. Unfortunately, we've got to let the Frenchman go. That all but confirms that no other player on the roster or at the club can play at a cam role. Lingard, the number 10 spot, has got your name written all over it. That's how United are lining up this season with a new and improved Lingard implemented in the starting 11. Forget Bruno. Lingard Dino is here to take over Manchester. With our boy approaching 30, it is vital that we get him hooked on a development plan right now, right away. Attacker midfielder is calling his name. It seems like the man himself, Ronaldinho, isn't retiring anytime soon. We're currently midway through the campaign and I've just checked over that Jesse has just completed the attacker midfielder development plan. We're going to change up the development plans halfway through the season. We'll give him a shot as Shadow Striker, actually. That one might be a decent shout. In order to get the best results, I think we've got to be adapting to the situation and continuing to be dynamic with his training. The Lingardinho Redemption arc is looking a little bit like this. His second season so far and his first returning to United. He has fired them to a Champions League spot. Finishing in third, pretty much outside contenders for the league, unfortunately, as West Ham, without Lingard, finished down in 10th and couldn't secure any sort of European football. As the Red Devils were eliminated in the FA Cup round 4-2-1 to Chelsea. No luck in the Carabao Cup either. Manchester City took that one home and against Fulham, they lost on penalties 5-4. No Champions League for United either. No Europa League. But here in the European final, it was an all-Italian affair and Ronaldinho's Milan won 2-1 against Napoli. Considering it is also 2022, the World Cup is upon us and in Qatar, England, where are they? Did they even qualify? England? Hello, there they are. Group F. Can Lingardinho, just like in 2018, get the international call-up and be involved in the national team setup? I guess we'll find out. Okay, Jesse might not be sweeping up trophies in terms of team performance, but individually, he has won the May Player of the Month award. Surely he has had a season to remember. This is a good sign, and he's only gone and done it. I know he is very far away from winning the Ballon d'Or, but at least that's something small to celebrate. Players leaving on international duty, and the, if there was one player we wanted to leave, it was Jesse Lingard, and unfortunately, he does not make the list. He hasn't made the cut. He is going to be spending pre-season partying. Let's take a close look at our May Player of the Month right here, Jesse. How did he do this season? We need some growth. We need some positive affirmations here, and he's gone up a plus two. So midway through the season, we changed up that development plan, whether that did him a world of good or held him back. I'm not quite sure. He's already had an 82 rating halfway in January. Now he has just maintained that a crucial first team member at the club since 2011. On the verge of hitting that dreaded age of 30, we'll take a look at his performance. That's 42 appearances this season, eight goals, and getting himself 12 assists. So not only finding the back of the net, but being creative with it, setting up his teammates. And he's gone a couple better than he did at West Ham. That is 20 goal contributions instead of 18. With an average 7.0 match rating, he pretty much played every single game of the campaign. However, can he manage that with multiple competitions next season? The Champions League testing himself at the highest of levels. The Shadow Striker development plan, I'm not quite sure, and we might change it back. I'm thinking of sticking with attacking midfielder headed into season three. How have I only just realized this now? Apparently, Lingard is a long shot taker. In real life, when has he ever scored a long shot? Okay, maybe he tries them, but did they ever go in the back of the net? Are they ever successful? As financially, he is now valued at 27 million pounds, a number which we're probably going to see decrease as soon as he hits 30. Mark my words. It's been a 22% boost though, so I guess he's still on the up. In the offseason, we've actually been active in the transfer market, making a couple of improvements to the team, acquiring new talent just like in real life. Rafael Varane is joining us in the back line, and thanks to the departure of Bruno Fernandes, we forced him out of the club, but we had to get a fellow Portuguese superstar, Ruben Neves from Wolves arrives, and he's going to partner up with Paul Pogba and send him in. Now, whilst I was simulating through the transfer window, actually, Lingard has gone up to an 83, so he's already starting this season off with a bang. 
bang. His contract expires soon, so I might have to go ahead and renew that. Lingard is crucial, not in my eyes, but everyone's eyes. A two-year extension is fine by me. You know what? Sir BCHD is going to give the man what he deserves. A million pounds a week. That's right. You heard me correctly. We're making Lingard Dino a billionaire. There you have it. The man is accepted, and boy, oh boy, he has signed a once-in-a-lifetime deal, but only special players like Lingard can get those. What can he do here in his third campaign? Can he climb any closer to Ronaldinho's overall? We're closing the curtains on season three in what we thought we could make Linga Jardinho better than Ronaldinho. We're going to have a quick reality check here because in the Prem, you know how to finish in six. I believe that is still Europa League qualification, but a far cry from last season's efforts as West Ham back down in 10th without Lingard. It's been abysmal as Spurs have gone and won the league. That's how you know something's up. In terms of their FA Cup fate, they lost out in round five, 3-2 to Leicester. And in terms of the Carabao Cup, Spurs won that again. They knocked out Lingard's United with a 2-0 aggregate win in the semis, eliminated in every single competition. Now the Champions League see something special here in Group D. I think that's a group of death. You can say that. Man United, Barcelona, Roma and Feyenoord. They came through in second, undefeated, three wins and three draws. In the round of 16, they took down Milan 3-2. Ronaldinho got sent packing, taking on PSG and it gives off similar vibes that night in Paris all those years ago. United win on away goals and in the semis, they came through against Liverpool to win 4-3 and booked their spot in a 2009 replay of the Champions League final. Can they get revenge not only in 09 but in 2011 as well? Barca versus Manchester United at Wembley. Now we get to do it all over again with Lingardinho in 2023. Honestly, this team confuses me. My mind is boggled at how they could perform so poorly domestically over in the international stage. Continentally, they just come through with some brilliant performances and it's a magical run to the final. They might have got lucky, but who hasn't got lucky is Jesse Lingard as he's proven his worth aging like a fine wine. In career modes of years gone by, you'd see players hit 30 as soon as they do that. Downgrades are to follow, but not in Jesse Lingard's case as he's got himself 50 appearances this year domestically and over in Europe, he scored 12 goals and 7 assists, so 19 goal contributions. The consistency is on point. With an average match rating of 6.8, he is well and truly in the highest performance of the team. Top 4 actually. One of the main MVPs and has grown a plus 3. Now his overall rating standing at 85. It is absolutely brilliant. Might be time to change the development plan though. We just left it on attacking midfield. He's in good form. No stats are being close to maxed out, but at least he's still growing at this old age. Nonetheless, maybe it was that 1 million pound a week pay rise we gave him as his transfer market value has hit 47 million pounds on the dot, receiving a 42% boost. Not only will we be awarding him with a start tonight, we are going to give him the captain's armband, so potentially he could be lifting up the holy grail for United. I think now is a better time than ever to showcase his big match presence. Can he pull off a masterclass on the European stage? And it's a 4-3 loss. Unfortunately, Lingard had the night of his life. With the opening goal, he got himself a double. It went into extra time, and then Usman Dembele absolutely tore up. They were 10 minutes away from winning the European title. Heartbreaking scenes here as that brings his goal tally this season or just his goal contributions up to 21, which is the highest so far. You'd expect him to stop and start regressing, declining on the way down at this stage, but no, he's still got a bit more fuel left in the tank. He has shortened the gap. The margin has closed in on Ronaldinho and he's feeling the pressure as he's only 10 more overall points away. Is it possible? Is it attainable? I mean, with the way things are going, Jesse can well and truly shock the world here. Set to turn 31 this season. Four years in, we're going to switch him back and then implement the advanced playmaker development plan just to see how this kind of training goes. Some new additions to the team include to stake it in a net, but now Lingard will be assisting and playing in the attack with the likes of Didier Drogba leading the line up top. The Chelsea legend will be joining the dark side here at United, and I think we've got some kind of Ryan Giggs regen, Reese Volks. He has potential to be special left mid. He is well so I'm just putting the two and two together. We might be getting a bit carried away here, bringing back the likes of Nemanja Vidic and Rio Ferdinand, a legendary Premier League centre-back partnership and club legends here at United. Not only are we trying to get Jay Lings to be one of the best players and overtake Ronaldinho, we're also trying to build the best team around him, so he's got the best teammates, he's got a solid group of players. We're trying to follow the mantra that if he is surrounded by ballers, he himself will become a baller. With Season 5 up next, about to run its course, will Jay Lings age like fine wine again or will he age like milk? The fourth campaign is done and dusted and we can already see a major improvement from last time out finishing in second runners up to Liverpool who win the league by 9 points still searching for that first piece of team silverware. Qualifying for Champions League football next season is what you'll want to see. West Ham down in 11th we take a look at the FA Cup they do
do have a final up against Wolverhampton. So this is his time at Wembley to prove himself like he did in 2016 against Crystal Palace. That famous winning goal. Can he do it all over again against Wolves? I guess we'll have to find out as they beat the likes of Aston Villa, Everton and of course Chelsea along the way. They couldn't do the same in the Carabao Cup as Liverpool took down Wolves. Again, Wolves just in a lot of cup finals recently. The Red Devils eliminated quite early. 5-4 on penalties to Spurs. Now what a storyline. What a matchup we have here in the Europa League final. Manchester United are taking on winners. I think two seasons ago, AC Milan, Ronaldinho's Rossoneri are going to be in the big dance alongside us. It's Lingardinho versus Ronaldinho in a European final. If only it was the Champions League. We're going to have to settle for Europa as they made it out of their group in second. They just did it. Clinching a 5-4 aggregate win against Borussia Mönchengladbach. Progressing into the round of 16. Taking down Aston Villa. Over in the quarters, they comfortably defeated Wolfsburg 2-0. And in the semis, they absolutely obliterated Fiorentina 7-1 on aggregate. And Jaylings can capture two trophies as the captain to lead the side out. He's put in the hard yards this season on the pitch and on the training ground. In the big games, can he do it? He's done it in a Champions League final. Scoring a double. Now at the FA Cup at Wembley. It is the big one. And he's done it yet again. He's scoring an 87th minute goal. And also getting the opener. He loves a big game. Instead of the Emirates, he's making Wembley his dance floor as he scores a double in this FA Cup final. Drogba gets his second. And it's a professional, comfortable 3-0 display. It's the first piece of silverware he gets to lift at the club as a captain. As he gets to face his longtime opponent, Ronaldinho, in the final. Still going strong at 44. Closing the gap to 8 overall points away. If he gets a 1-up on him tonight and takes home the title, that will be a major game changer. I want to watch this one play out. As you can see, the lineup side by side. Ronaldinho is starting. We'll watch the simulation do its thing. If they need some of our help, we'll jump in. It's so weird because in the Shaw Roberto Carlos video, we had a Champions League final where it was Shaw Roberto Carlos as well. Something's just written in the stars here. The career mode gods are just making all these storylines for the content. Here we go. Ball inside to Jay Ling's in the final and it's a shot straight into the path of Donnarumma. There we go. All over them and Jesse Lingard again with another shot. How many chances does he need? We're headed into extra time unless there is one last twist and there isn't. We're going to continue with 120 minutes worth of football. Here we go. Jay Ling's inside to Drogba and Drogba with a one-on-one. -on -one. And again, Donnarumma keeping Milan in this tie. The Brazilian has dropped a disaster class. He's been subbed, but we're keeping Lingard on. All right, we're going to penalties. We're going to penalties. Let's just get this over and done with. I guess we'll have to watch it. Drogba converts his penalty. Is Lingard up? Lingard's fourth taker. Benacer converts his. Why don't I just jump to the result, man? Now we have to go through all this. Volks misses his penalty. Good. Oh, okay. Tonali gets his shot saved. Can't even skip this, man. I have to jump in now. Now that Milan missed theirs, we have the chance to win it. Oh no, I jumped in too late. Are you kidding me? I jumped in too late. Lingard took it without me. Oh my god, he's missed his penalty. Donnarumma saved his. Uh, now we're in here without Donnarumma. Oh, okay. Aspilicueta saved it. There's so much going on in the last like five seconds. Ruben Neves with the chance to win it. Lingard must might have missed his penalty, but Ruben Neves can convert. And that is it. Manchester United and Lingard are Europa League champions. He'll be lifting up the trophy tonight after what has been a pretty boring, a pretty stock standard finale. It is proved all the drama in the penalty shootout. But now I guess we can watch them celebrate. They got the well-deserved double. And now Jay Lings is about to lift that bad boy up high. It's a moment they'll cherish forever. He'll cherish forever. He continues to age like a fine Italian wine. Jay Lings has proven me wrong and now he is well and truly in with a chance. Let's take a look at his season four numbers. We thought he was done out here in the mud, completely finished. But hey, dynamic potential has other ideas as it's kind of revived Jesse Lingard's career and put him on that trajectory to enter the 90s and potentially equal Ronaldinho's rating. We've got him at an 87 overall. It's another plus two. He loves being consistent with it. The 31 year old now with so much experience. He's not a wonder kid no more. As much as we love to think that with his baby face, times have changed and oh my goodness me, Jesse Lingard. I know I throw this term around a lot, but the season of his life. He doesn't compete against the likes of Didier Drogba with 55 goals this year, but he's the second highest goal scorer as a cam. 21 goals and 15 assists for the first time probably ever in his professional life. He's got double figures in both goals and assists. 21 goals and 15 assists. To put it in perspective, 36 goal contributions where he was averaging roughly like 18, 19, 20. Now all of a sudden, the captain of Manchester United is leading by example. He's in good form. Five-star skill moves, five-star weak foot. He's just beaten out his arch nemesis in a Europa League final. The hunt to be better than Ronaldinho is well and truly on. With that one million pounds a week, he is now valued at 59.5 million pounds.
touchdowns. Jaylings, I don't know what you're doing, but just keep doing what you're doing. This could go down as one of the greatest comebacks. There's no way. It has actually happened. Jesse Lingard has been caught up to the national team. Gareth Southgate's had his head turned. Now he's representing England again on the international stage, carrying a red card, of course. It was definitely a tournament and a summer to remember for the three Lions. Jesse Lingard carried them all the way to the semi-finals, losing out to their old famous arch rivals, Germany, 3-0. Three wins out of three. They were flawless, but they just couldn't do it up against the Germans. It looks like Lingardinho came through for Southgate's men, but he played pretty much every single game. Unfortunately, he didn't score, didn't assist. He hasn't been replicating his United numbers onto the international scene because that form is abysmal by his standards. If you're wondering when this miracle run slash resurgence is ever going to end, I have no clue. I'm going to shift his development plan back to attacking midfielder to see if advanced playmaker was just a fluke or is that the actual best training to apply him to. I bet the Brazilian is sweating right now. Lingardinho living rent free in Ronaldinho's mind right now. He's clearly surpassed expectations, at least my expectations anyway. And we're bumping up that salary from 1 million pounds a week to 2 million because the boy deserves it. Come on. Get around him people. The captain is not done yet. Improvements to the squad this season include bringing back Marcus Rashford from Barcelona for 242.9 million pounds and then bringing in two pretty random players. We've got Sanda Luan Roca Lima, the random Brazilian free agent. He's a backup super sub in off the bench at 87 overall. And then Ellis Mali, who is someone's regen. I just don't know who. As long as they're not competition for the cam spot, I'm all for it. Yeah, I think we've accidentally created a modern day dynasty. United have gone undefeated. Lingard is now an invincible. With 110 points, they're centurions, they're invincibles, they're champions. What else can't this Lingard led United do? Lingardinho collecting trophies like Infinity Stones as they win 4-0 in the Community Shield final, getting a cheeky double over in the FA Cup. They couldn't make the final as they were knocked out to Liverpool 3-2 in round 6. The Carabao Cup saw a finals loss as they were just outplayed on the day against Liverpool 3-1 at Wembley. The UEFA Super Cup and it was a 3-1 display to United. Lingard again lifting up another piece of silverware. That's 3 so far. We've still got the Champions League to go as we take a look at that. No. How is this simulation this perfect? They faced Milan in the Europa League last time out and now they've upped the stakes. It is a Champions League final in 2025. Lingardinho versus Ronaldinho. This is going to go down in the history books. They came out undefeated on top of Group F alongside Inter. They're out of 16. They progress past PSG 4-1. The quarterfinals saw them defeat Atletico 3-1 and over in the semis it was a 5-3 thriller against Chelsea in an all-English affair. And now it's all to play for after losing out to Barca all those years ago. Jay Lings and the gang have a point to prove. It's time he's hit an 89. He's only one away from being considered one of the world's best. He's nearly hit that elite level if he's not already at that. Clearly still growing. Whatever we're doing is still working. Now, I want to play this final. I want to see how he plays in game. What he's like. Ronaldinho, the captain of Milan, the Rossoneri, looking quite strong. Imagine the scenes though, winning the Holy Grail on their own patch. Lingard doing it right in front of the Brazilian at his home stadium. Nothing would be more humiliating than that. The perfect fairy tale. There he is, ready for business. I'm surprised he's not rubbing his hands together, but here we go as Didier Drogba kicks us off. Jesse Lingard, get us on the way, son. Outside to Drogba. Now, again, Pogba sets up Drogba. And on the angle, Donnarumma has to make a quick and smart save. Trying to... Oh, it's him versus Ronaldinho. A little bit of beef. And Lingard is trying to get a crunching tackle in. He's showing his hatred towards the man. To drift it wide, Neves. All of a sudden, Lingard. And that is a very poor shot. Definitely wasn't a trademark one. Oh, as they called half time right there. Okay. Second 45. A very cagey opening. Sparing few chances. We'll go again. Ronaldinho running through. Vidic can't stop him. And over through to Tetacino. And all of a sudden, they're on side to stay again. Caught into action for the first time. Oh, no. Defense all over the place. And here we go, Ronaldinho now, one-on-one -on -one with Stegen, and he's not going to let that chance go to waste. Ronaldinho actually scores. Okay, this this means war now. This means war. They get one solid opportunity, and the Brazilian takes it every day of the week. Defense was all over the place. Stegen had no chance, one-on-one, -on -one, and he has buried that volley violently into the bottom left-hand corner. we got 17 minutes to find an equalizer. Here we go, Neves. 
Nice little wrap around, and Neves inside to Lingard, all of a sudden left foot shot, and it's an absolute firecracker, an instant response, and Lingardinho replies in the only way he knows, with an absolute scorcher in the bottom right hand corner, complete, nothing was on, nothing was on, out of nothing, they just ran forward off kickoff, and it was a lovely little combination between Neves and Lingard, takes it past his defender, and all of a sudden it's a flash chance for him, on the room, left scrambling, and all of a sudden it's game on, he loves a final goal and he's done it again. We got some subs on. Pepe and our random Brazilian free agent are going to try and make the impact. How has Ferdinand not won the ball? There we go. Finally, it's back in our possession. Ronaldinho has been subbed off and this is where Lingard can shine. As you can see, he just bursting past his defenders in a lovely little bit of space, trying to provide the assist. And it's Roca Lima who completely scuffs his chance. That was the moment. That was the opportunity. And he's fluffed his lines from the six-yard box. And like old time's sake, it's two finals in a row that it's going to extra time between these two. We're going to need the full 120, if not penalties, to decide this one. Lovely little opening there, but Roca Lima... Has his second bite of the cherry with that over the top through ball. Now Lingard back over inside. Can Drogba beat to Stegen? He does, but on the angle, it's a tough one to finish. Olga back inside. That's a terrible ball. And Ruben Neves latches onto that one. Surely Nicola Pepe is onside. And the Ivorians can link up here inside. No, it will be to the back stick. And Roca Lima makes up for his missed chance earlier. If only it came in the 90. We would have won it already. But that is the goal to put us ahead for the first time tonight. In the 103rd minute, it has come through Nicola Pepe. Super sub in off the bench. And that is a rapid fire cross inside. Beating the entire Milan defense. And the number 15 made no mistake. Now all of a sudden, there is an urge for a third just to put the game to bed. Pogba and Lingard, the two boys from the United Academy linking up. And here we go, the wrap around, the lovely little back heel, and that could have been the assist of the season. But it's not going to matter. We didn't need to settle it on penalties this time. It is a 2-1 win for United, and Lingard can lift the Champions League on his own arch nemesis's patch. Invincible in the Premier League, UA for Super Cup winners, Community Shield champions, and also champions of Europe. Lingardinho might not be better statistically, but boy, he has proved to be one of United's best captains, if not one of the best players in this team, despite only being 89 overall, the number 20 comes through and he turns up in the big games. He's a big game player. The ribbons on the trophy are red and white and these invincible red devils can now celebrate. If that doesn't end the debate, a highly decorated, successful campaign like that, I don't know what will. In terms of numbers this season, let's see what he's produced. The captain leading by example, important goals, crucial moments, and at 32 years of age, he is still going strong. They say you can't teach old dogs new tricks. Well, he's definitely an outlier over 15 years here at the club we better start getting his testimonial organized as he's achieved double figures again in both goals and assists 16 goals 17 assists this time they're a bit more balanced those two being a bit more of a playmaker in 55 appearances and that has been his highest average match rating yet 7.6 Zinio, get down on your knees start praising your brand new king as united's boy wonder has only gone and done it again not even with a maxed out stat yet and he's still producing numbers like these at this age five Financially now valued at 73.5 million pounds. This man's stocks just continue to rise. We're going to be keeping a keen eye on these Ballon d'Or nominations. Surely he's up there around in the top four unless his teammates have outshot him. Maybe the man's just too good for the Ballon d'Or. I don't know. FIFA need to create a separate award for J Ling's brilliance, all right? It's a shame that the best player in the world doesn't get the recognition he deserves. However, he's kind of indirectly involved in, I guess, the Ballon d'Or nominations at least because his teammate Didier Drogba is up for the award. If it wasn't for all those assists and playmaking opportunities and chances he provided him, would Drogba be up for the Ballon d'Or? I don't think so. Drogba, I'm expecting you to name drop Lingardinho in your thank you speech, in your acceptance letter. You better let our man Jay Lings actually borrow it for a season maybe. Who knows? Just give him the golden ball for fun. Let's look on the bright side here. If Jesse can't have it, at least one of his teammates can hold it. As we approach 2026, Lingard has hit a plus one and that has bumped him up to a 90 overall. Considered one of the world's best. At 32, he's turning 33 this season. How does this man do it? This man needs to be checked because he's aging too well. I wouldn't be surprised if the Premier League demanded a drug test for him because he is clearly using some kind of voodoo magic. Dynamic potential is well and truly on his side. A quick overview of season six. I didn't expect we'd get this far, but here we are. United are Centurions. Unfortunately, they aren't invincible like last time, but they've only lost one game in two seasons. Over in the Community Shield, they did take down Liverpool 2-0 quite comfortably in a professional display. They couldn't take a hold of the FA Cup though, getting knocked down 
out, getting knocked out in round three to West Ham 2-1. The Carabao Cup saw them get the better of Chelsea yet again with a 3-1 win and securing yet another title. They did, however, get a taste of their own medicine in their second back-to-back -back Champions League final, a 2-1 loss to Barca, just like it was a couple of years ago. The Blaugrana, again, just getting the better of them. It's like setting the DNA. Barcelona just know how to defeat United in a final. The party's over, boys. The decline has started already. Oh, just when you thought we were defying all logic, Lingard and Carimo to have other ideas because he's now gone down to minus one. You saw that halfway through the season. Around the Ballon d'Or announcement, Lingard popped up to a 90. He's come back down to reality and he's only at an 89 with 65 appearances this season. He had an average match rating of 7.3, which got him 10 goals and 18 assists, 28 goal contributions. And that is the third campaign in a row, I believe, if I'm keeping track correctly, of double figures in both goals and assists. His career has flourished, no doubt, and returning to Manchester United was probably the best decision we ever made for him. You can see his valuation has climbed back down 18%, decreasing to 71.5 million pounds. He's hit 33, and I think now his time has come. He might not have surpassed or even equaled Ronaldinho's rating, currently still at a 95, but my gosh, he definitely did get closer than we all expected, or at least I didn't. Can't believe I doubted Lingardinho himself, but he definitely made us believe, possibly even sold us a dream that he could do it. A thought just sprung to mind. If you can't beat him, join him. We've pinned them up against each other in this growth test battle as arch enemies. The rivalry ran for so long. Now the two old Dinos will be joining forces here at the San Siro for AC Milan as Lingard makes the jump, finally changing things up and leaving Old Trafford. The now 33-year-old English Cam, who's about to turn 34 this season, what can him and Ronaldinho do in one team? We're doing it for the culture. It is one last dance in probably what has been the biggest plot twist you never saw coming. This is the crossover that nobody thought they wanted until now. J-Lings gets gifted the number 22 as this is how they'll be lining up together. Both sides of the wings. I made sure that it was a cam-only formation. We've got them leading the front line. That attacking quadrant of Ronaldinho, Nunes, Ante Rebic and Lingard himself is going to be frightening. What happens when two gods of the game combined and join power? I guess we're just going to have to sim one last more campaign to find out. Now it would have been way too perfect for England and Brazil to match up in the World Cup final here in 2026. England get eliminated again in the semis, losing out to the Italians 1-0 yet again in the quarterfinals. Okay, they actually did take each other on. I don't think Dino's called up for international duty for Brazil, so I guess Lingard just played a part in that with a 3-2 win against the South Americans. Here at the World Cup, he finally got himself off the mark with one assist and seven appearances, an average 6.4 match rating. On the international scene, he can tick that off his bucket list. He finally has a goal contribution. I'm sad to announce that both Enios in Italy in Serie A were unable to win the Scudetto, finishing runners-up with Milan 80 points. Atalanta take home the title. In the Coppa Italia, though, they did win that one, so the Italian Cup comes home, and the two once rivals can celebrate a beautiful victory over Juventus, a 2-1. They weren't involved in the Champions League, but they did have a Europa League final up against Arsenal and they lost that one out 2-1, unfortunately. Only one piece of silverware to celebrate this season, but one's better than none. Now let's check the synergy between these two. We'll find out who was on the same wavelength as Ronaldinho has completely... At 47, man, he is still going on. He's about to hit the half century and he's turned up with a season like that. 58 appearances, 42 goals and 11 assists. These are numbers that you can't even comprehend. 53 goal contributions in 58 appearances. And meanwhile, Lingard, I mean, he's proven himself at Manchester United, 34 years of age, 9 goals and 11 assists. Downgrading again, he's definitely on the decline, 9 goals and 11, 20 goal contributions with an average match rating of 6.9. Decent first stint out here in Italy, but the difference between these two, I mean, Ronaldinho has been at AC Milan for how many years? Seven years now? It's a tough one still, Lingardinho slowly depleting in overall, standing at an 88. His final market value will be 56 million pounds with a 22% decline. Now, you know, we couldn't make Lingardinho technically better than Ronaldinho but what we did do is win him so many trophies, revive his career and just put him on an upwards trajectory for so long. It has been one of the most insane unexpected videos I've recorded this year so far so make sure if you did go on to enjoy it, drop a like down below, comments who should be next in this challenge. I left the poll up on the community tab so you can go over and vote there if you haven't already. It's been another Sir BCHD masterclass to witness. Drop a sub if you're new around here for more content like this. Hit up all my socials linked down in the description. As always, I've been so BCHD. Hopefully you have a great day and I'll catch you all in the very next video.